some GPL licenses like GPL V2 and GPL V3, along with the Mac App Store and iOS Store, have a really interesting history together. Starting back in about 2010, 2011, and a couple of times since then, multiple big name apps licensed under these licenses have been removed from those stores. This has led people to say that GPL type licenses, especially V2 and V3, are just incompatible with the store altogether. But there's no provision in their terms of service that say you cannot use these licenses if you want to publish something on our store. It's far, far more complicated than that. And the details of such have definitely changed with the licenses and updates to their policies. While both GPL v2 and GPL v3 share a common base being created by the FSF with the same set of goals in mind, they are fundamentally different licenses and do have different ways of interacting with the store. So there are two main terms of these licenses that kind of conflict with the store. Now, I'm not a lawyer. If you're trying to publish something on these stores with these licenses, I highly recommend contacting a lawyer to find out specific details for your case. But this is just what we have seen from the projects that have been removed. We'll start with GPL v2 because this is more of a clear cut case that has generally led people to say that GPL v2 is completely incompatible with the store. GPL v3, it's a bit of a harder question to answer. So GPL v2 has a section known as section 7, which includes this right here. If you cannot distribute so as to satisfy simultaneously your obligations under this license and any other pertinent obligations then as a consequence, you may not distribute the program at all. So in this case, Apple is going to be the distributor of the software. So if they would like to distribute the software, they must not apply any restrictions to it that would basically get in the way of the obligations of the license. And if we go over to their terms of service, there is a section in here known as services and content usage rules. And there are things in here about not being able to use a piece of content on more than a certain number of devices or not being able to modify that content. And having this in here basically gets in the way of your obligations under GPL. So this is basically why VLC back in 2011 was able to be removed with a complaint made by the developers of VLC. The reason why they wanted it removed is because someone went and took the source code for VLC, packaged it up to make it work on iOS, and then basically stuck a price tag on it. And they weren't exactly happy in seeing that happen, so they basically filed the complaint, got it removed, and since then, VLC actually was added into these stores. You may argue whether what they did was right or not, but that is something the App Store did allow them to do. So GPL v2 is a fairly clear-cut case. In the case of GPL v3, though, it's not as simple. We still do have to look at the exact same section, the services and content usage rules, but the wording of Section 7 has been considerably changed. If the program as you received it or any part of it contains a notice stating that it is governed by this license along with a term that is a further restriction, you may remove that term. This is a really hard one to answer because what GPL v3 is basically saying here is that this license takes precedence over the Apple Store. And that puts Apple into a really, really weird situation. Because if the license of projects on their store can just ignore the terms of the store, how are they supposed to distribute that code? I don't know whether this would actually hold up in court. I don't think it's ever actually been taken to court. I don't know whether the GPL or the Apple TOS would actually hold up. But what I do know is that Apple doesn't really want to deal with that problem. There's another part of GPL v3 that acts as basically the nail in the coffin. You may not impose any further restrictions on the exercise of rights granted or affirmed under this license. This is basically what was stated in GPL v2, but in a much shorter way. If any GPL software is being distributed on the Apple Store, from my very not lawyer understanding, I believe this would be in violation of these terms of the license. Now, there's an article from the FSF back in 2010 that explained the problems with the TOS at the time. Now, the TOS has greatly changed since then, but the same problems basically persist. However, there is one part of this I still do want to read because it still does hold up even today. 
So this last sentence is a crucial part referring to the license, a crucial part of the strong copy left in the GPL and AGPL. It prevents distributors from using separate legal agreements like terms of service or NDAs to take away the freedoms that their license is supposed to grant. This is the condition that Apple is violating when it distributes GPL covered software through the App Store. Now with all of that considered, ignoring the software that is on the App Store potentially in violation of the GPL and the Apple TOS, ignoring that software, there is actually software on those stores that aren't in violation and are using GPL v2 or GPL v3. So how is that actually happening? If your code relies on GPL code written by other people, let's say a library that is licensed under GPL, you're basically out of luck. There's not really much I can say for you. But if you're the sole copyright holder, what you can do is multi-license that project. So you can have the GPL v2 version, that is the one that you release publicly, and then if you want it to be on the App Store, you can use a more permissive license. Basically anything, actually basically anything that's not GPL v2, AGPL, or GPL v3, like you could use LGPL and you'll be perfectly fine. The only way you can get around this problem with GPL libraries, or let's say you're using MySQL, is if the project offers a way to have a different license. In the case of MySQL, you can pay a license fee and be offered a, I think you can get it under MIT, but I might be mistaken about the license. And that allows you to get around these restrictions and release on the App Store perfectly fine. Now, there is another way we can do this that isn't going to destroy the rights of your contributors, unlike some of the other things we'll mention in just a bit. And that is by using a GPL exception. So one project that uses this is the iOS release of Nextcloud. So this is, if we go look at the license that is right here, as we'll see, this is a GPL v3 project but being the iOS release, obviously it's available on the App Store. So if we scroll down just a bit, as we'll see, it's GPL v3 with the Apple App Store exception. And what this basically does is says, hey, this is a GPL v3 project, and we understand this is GPL v3. But if this is released on the iOS Store, basically ignore the terms of GPL v3 that conflict with the store. However, if it's not in the store, let's say I'm looking at this repo right here, those restrictions still do apply. This, in my opinion, is the best way to handle it. You will still have some people that will complain saying, oh, you just shouldn't help out the App Store, you just shouldn't release on the App Store altogether, but the App Store has a lot of users, and if you want to be on iOS, you have to be on the App Store. So you have to play ball with Apple even if it means just ignoring some parts of the GPL on their store. Now, like with any sort of license change, you can't just go and change it as you feel like it if you do have external contributors. If you are the only person who has ever contributed to that project, sure, you can go and change the terms of license however you want. If you do have external contributors though, which most projects that would consider doing something like this probably do, you will need to go and contact those contributors and ask them if it's okay to modify the license. Now, maybe you want to make more license changes in the future. Instead of having the GPL exception, you instead want to go with a more permissive license that just wouldn't be a problem with the iOS store in the first place. In that case, maybe you want to use a CLA, otherwise known as a Contributor License Agreement. What this basically does is it's similar to having, say, a employment agreement when you work for a dev company. Basically, you're signing away certain rights to your code that will allow the maintainers to go and make these changes without having to go and contact you again. I know you can point to a couple of projects that have, say, GPL v2 and have existed on the App Store for like five or ten years. I'm well aware those do exist, but just because you can point to exceptions that are breaking the rules doesn't mean that the rules don't exactly exist. Because unless you tell Apple what your license is, they probably aren't going to know about it. Unless you're like a really big project or someone actually makes a complaint about it. Like if say, I don't know, um, GIMP for example wanted to release on the iOS store, Apple will know what the license of that is going to be. But if you're a small project, really the only thing you can do is make that complaint. 
I've also seen people link to this list right here that you can see over on Wikipedia. What this is, is a list of free and open source software available as iOS applications. And what you'll notice is almost everything on this list that is GPL v2 or GPL v3 either has a CLA, a GPL exception, or they have both. And if that's going to be your benchmark, then just don't even send me this list. It doesn't even matter. While Apple has never come out and released an official statement saying that GPL v2 and GPL v3 projects are incompatible with their stores, going by their terms of service, along with the terms of the GPL v2 and GPL v3 licenses, along with the fact that projects have been removed from the stores because of complaints related to GPL, it seems fairly clear that this actually is the case. Once again, I am not a lawyer. I am just a dude ranting in his bedroom about programming licenses. If you need actual legal advice, please do go seek a professional. If you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please do go check out my Patreon, LiberaPay, Subscribestar, all linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream about twice a week and upload five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is available over on Odyssey. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'm out.